Hello everyone, this is Diane. I just want to talk to you today about my next project. Um, I know the chicken journals aren't done yet, but I've gotten as far as I can for the moment. Um, I thought I could get what I the rest of what I needed to sew the signatures into the cover um, at Walmart. I'm following Amity Bloom's uh, tutorial, her um, journal course. It's a purchased course called Every The Everyday Journal and I'm doing it, putting it together the way um, that she shows because I'm trying to learn new things and new ways of doing things. Um, she uses the cotton crochet thread and um, beeswax and I thought I could get that at Walmart but they've really really cut down their supplies. Um, they remodeled our store and some things are cut down. So anyway, long story short, um, I I can't get the cotton thread there and or and I didn't see any beeswax. So I ordered them from Amazon and they'll be here on Wednesday. Today's Monday, so I have to wait so I can put those um, books together. So in the meantime, I thought, well, I'm going to clean up my craft room a little bit later today, but while the light is still good, I want to get started on the next project, which is um, something that I need, well, you know, it, what a journaler needs, and that is to replace my book, uh, book reader's journal. It's full. It will be, I can finish the month of December with it, and then it's done. So I'm going to make a new one, but first let me just show you what my book reader's journals are. This is the first one I made, and I actually used a book that I had when I was young. Now this book is older than me, but um, it belonged to my great aunt, my father's aunt, and uh, I don't remember her at all except when I was pretty young, I just remember her being an old lady. <laughs> And uh, after she passed away, I do remember going to the auction at her house or the estate sale or whatever it was. And um, I got some, I picked out a couple things there. I got some costume jewelry because my sister and I love to play dress up. And I got this book. I loved, loved, loved books when I was a kid. And I saw, I love fairy tales. I saw this and I wanted it and my dad bought it for me. You can see it's stained and dirty. But it's Grimm's Fairy Tales. I think from the style of the cover, it was from the 30s. Look at that. And it was falling apart, um, not when I bought it, but as an adult when I started making journals, this book was falling apart. So I decided to turn it into a book reader's journal. That way I could keep my cover and my memories of it, and I would be able to use it. So I just made a little spine for it, and um, I covered it with Tyvek. And I, I put some lace over it after I sewed the signatures in, and I made this dangle for it. Use this Tim Holtz knob and put some book corners on it. I put Mod Podge on that. I don't know why. I don't know if I if it needed to be put on there, but I just had to unstick the pages from the front and the back. Um, I took the spine and made a bookmark with it. Mod Podged it to some cardstock. And I just put a bunch of stuff in there. Now, this was made in 2016. January 2016 is when I started using it. And this has a quote on the front Books are a uniquely portable magic. Stephen King. That was, I think, from Pinterest. So there are some pockets in there and cards, and the cards are fun for writing quotes from the books. Obviously, I didn't use that one. Uh, here is from a book, probably from this book, because it's a quote from Snow White. And then I make a list of the books that I read in January of 2016. The title, the author, my, a little quote about um, like a, a review or maybe a description of what the book was. Here I wrote Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling, read for the third time. And then I also have room for quotes taken from the books. I don't looks like I don't have any for January. Maybe I didn't start doing that right away. Here's one. 
So little the little tucks that I put in, I like to use for quotes, but I also write them on the pages. And I like to go back and see the quotes. I like to reread the quotes that I that stood out to me. I like this quote because it's someone cutting lace or something with scissors. It's called The Art of Mending. I There were a lot, in this by Elizabeth Berg, I love her writing, and there were a lot of quotes in this book. And I like this one. Let's read this one because it's about fixing something instead of throwing it away, which is something that we journalers like to do, junk journalers. As for mending, I think it's good to take the time to fix something rather than throw it away. It's an antidote to wastefulness and to the need for immediate gratification. You'll always notice the fabric scar, of course, but there's an art to mending. If you're careful, the repair can actually add to the beauty of the thing because it is a testimony to its worth. And I like this one, too. It's for a border, I told her. I need a yard and a half. She began cutting, and we stopped talking, both of us listening, I think, to the sound of the scissors. For those of us enamored of the world of textiles, this sound is a little symphony. It conjures an image of a head bent over a machine, the feel of fabric slipping through fingers, a small light focused on a field of intimate labor. And I think we crafters can understand that. We have the sounds that we love. Even watching a video, we like to listen to the sounds of the paper or the sounds of cutting or whatever uh, the sounds are that go along with our craft. So you can see, um, I just used images from the internet about quote, about reading. Um, I used book pages, I think, illustrations. This one has a tag tucked in the little bag that I wrote on. Um, of course, I used library pockets. And I used this book for two years. I used to read a lot more than I do now. It's got wet, apparently, somehow. My husband passed away um, in 2016. And my habits have changed, of course. They have to. And I used to read while he was watching a movie that I wasn't interested in. And, I mean, I read a lot. I read all the time. I just had to read. And I still read, but I usually don't read until I'm going to bed. I don't just sit in the middle of the day and read a book like I used to. Or even in the early evening. I'm usually working on a project watching TV or something because I don't share the TV with anybody I just watch what I want so so I don't read as much so it, this journal covered two years the next one covered more um, and I did have a few pages left over the next journal I made was from a book called The Five Little Peppers and How They Grew and I took this, these quotes from that and just glued them into the back of this book because I have good memories of this book also. So let's look at that one. The Five Little Peppers and How They Grew. Now, when I was young, my aunt and uncle had five boys and they liked to have my sister and me come over and, well, my Aunt Linda did. Um, because she just wanted some female companionship. She wanted some girls around. So my sister and I would go and stay for a week or so in the summer. And But we, we used to go there a lot. And just we just loved our Aunt Linda. And we played with our cousins. And she always read stories at bedtime to all of us kids when we were there. And this was one of the stories. I remember Five Little Peppers and How They Grew. I don't remember if this was the actual book cover that she had. I don't recall that image on it. But when I saw this in the store, the, the thrift store or rummage flea market, that's what I'm trying to say, at the flea market, 
um, I wanted this book. And I decided this would be the perfect book for my next book reader's journal. The funny thing is, my brother saw this at my house. And he, I don't know how he feels about me taking it apart and making a journal. Um, he knows this is what I do. But he actually found a copy of this book with the same cover, I think. And he had it restored. It was The spine was damaged. And he actually took the book somewhere and had it restored because... He had memories of this book also, which I was surprised. He wasn't with me when Linda was reading this to, to me when I was in the group, but he, she must have read it at another occasion when he was included. So he remembers this book too. She was a special lady. There's some uh, dangle on that. And again, in this book, I used a lot of children's book illustrations. And I added some fabric flips. My style of journaling had evolved some from when I made the first one. And this book lasted four years, <laughs> twice as long as the other one. But I am using all the pages, I think. That one had a few pages left at the back. But they're really fun, and it's really fun to look back and read the quotes that stood out. Sometimes I'm reading and reading and reading, and then I'm thinking, oh, I'm not paying attention to what quotes I might want to keep. I've noticed that uh, quotes that have to do with loss and remembering someone that you've lost stand out to me now, and I add those quite a bit in, in this book. I'm sorry, I'm just stopping to read some of the quotes. But you get the idea. Lots of, um, this is even washi tape up here that I like get to keep things that I like, quotes that I like, the pictures, illustrations that I like. I can use some trims and fabrics that I like to keep. Love this picture from a children's fairy tale book. And since I love children's books so much, yeah, here we are in December and I have the rest of the month to go. It's only December, is it the 6th today? Yeah, today's December 6th. Um, so I have this much space to write, and then these cards to write some quotes and whatever books I finish reading. I had to save this because we had collies when I was a kid. And I use Mrs. Cog's images. She has a couple sets about reading and books. Oh, there's an envelope here, so I've got another... That's a cool envelope. I should make some more of those. <laughs> I like that. All right, so let me show you the book covers I'm going to use now. These don't particularly have um, specific memory for me, these books. But I love music, and I loved music class in school, and these are school music books. The Music Hour fourth book and the Music Hour third book. I'm going to use this one for myself because I love this cover. Well, I love both covers, but I like that one for me. And this one I'm going to make to put in the shop. You don't have to use it for a reading record, but it will include a lot of children's book pages and um, book illustrations. But you can use it as you would any other journal. But this one I'm going to make with the purpose of <clears throat> using it as a reading journal. Before you say anything about cutting up these old books, because these are lovely books and they are in good condition. Um, and they're copyright 1937. 1929 to begin with, but this is the 1937 edition. So they are old and they are in great condition. Look at that, and paper. I love that. But 
I need to tell you that these have been at the flea market in the barns for years since I started going there. I don't know how long before that they were there, but they're there. They're always there. And so I bought some. I think I had bought this one before just because the cover was so wonderful. And they're $4 each. Some of them are more, but I leave them there. So these were all $4, and they do smell musty. But they they just sit in the barn not being used, and I am going to give them a beautiful new life, and I am very happy about that. And the pages won't go to waste. I will use many of the pages in the journal, and I will make ephemera out of the music and the images. So... That's just what I want to say to anybody who would criticize me or scold me for cutting up these books. I'm going to use these these journals. I'm sorry, I'm just having trouble finding my words today. I'm going to use these journals as my next design team project for Lorna Taylor from Taylor Made Journals. I was um, doing two. It's guest design team. She is inviting people through her Facebook to um, be de design, be on her design team. Um, and then she um, offers you two kits. So I did the one with the uh, Time of Illumination. This kit is shabby, shabby chic wallpaper. I think this is set one. She has several sets. She has so many digitals. And I had the idea that I wanted to use these pages for this book. So I'm just going to flip through. There's a lot of pages, so I won't probably won't show you all of them, but look at that one. I love this one. Love that one. Maybe I will flip through them all. You need to see them. Look at that. So beautiful. And I like it when it has the uh, maker and the number on the edge. So pretty. I just have a thing for wallpaper. That is just awesome. It takes a lot of red ink, but it's beautiful. My printer does really well. I have an HP Envy and I'm on the HP ink. I forgot what it's called, but it, um, it knows automatically when I need more of a certain color of ink or when I'm running low and it sends it to me and I get billed. It's a monthly billing um, and you can select a level for how many, according to how many pages that you use. Um, so I don't, I never run out of ink because it always sends it to me before I run out. But anyway, I don't change my ink that often and I print a lot of stuff between, um, I'm always printing receipts and labels and stuff for orders when people order from my shop and that's just black and white I print stuff for the Sunday school lessons that I teach every week and I print quite a few color pages and I really don't have to change my ink very often aren't these so pretty though And she has more, more sets. She has sets called Shabby Chic, which is what this is, but she has other, lots and lots and lots of wallpaper digital sets in addition to all the other awesome digitals that she has. So that's what I'm going to use for those books. And of course I have a lot of images from children's books and I will use pages from children's books too. So um, these are just miscellaneous images from children's books. I have this little packet that is um, children. So that's a pretty thick bundle because there are lots of images of children. These are actually from a pattern or a pattern book or something. 
whisper doll clothes patterns but I love these images so I put them with my book images and I'm gonna keep some of these in my book that I make but lots and lots and lots of images of children from my kids books and I have this which is people so it's mostly adults but if the ch if there are children with the with an adult I think I they can go either way but I think I normally put them in this so there's a little boy but there's a man there because images of adults in the children's books aren't as common so I just put them in here if, even if there's a child in it and then of course the animals Lots of animals in children's books also. So I, I have plenty to choose from, plus pages. I have a lot of book pages that I can cut from or just use the page. So I, I will have plenty to fill my books with. So a few minutes left I am going to start deconstructing the book this has the fabric it's a very well bound book and yes I do have qualms about cutting books up like this but what am I going to do with it it'll just sit on my shelf too I will I would love it I would it would sit on my shelf and I would love it but I want to use it so I'm just going to cut that figure out the best way to do it. This is not knife proof. This is what I normally use to cut a cover off a book, but I thought I would try to pretend like knives don't bother me. <laughs> Act like a grown-up and use a knife. And I'm just trimming off any of the loose um, fabric and materials. There's the chipboard in there, and I'm just cutting off anything that's hanging over the edge of the chipboard. I'm going to try this one with my scissors. See if I can, if it works better. Yeah, it's much easier for me. See? That was easy. I am going to keep this for sure. So here's my book. So in addition to the papers from Lorna, um, I can write on the back sides of those papers and I'll probably include some scrapbook paper and I will also include some lined paper and coffee dyed paper, make sure there's plenty of room for writing. I will include pockets and envelopes so that things can be put inside that can be written on because the purpose of the journal is to keep record of things you read so you need writing space for that And the other one I did with my scissors was super easy. There we go. Okay, so I'm 
I've got the covers ready. This is the fourth grade book, and it do doesn't have as many illustrations. It has more portraits. Well, these are illustrations, but they're there's a portrait or an illustration, but mostly they're portraits of the composer, which is fun too. But this one is third grade. Let me see if it has more children's illustrations. Yeah. I've had these kind of books that had a lot of illustrations like that. Yeah, there's still not a lot, but I have plenty. I'm not worried about that. I remember my grandfather's clock, me saying that when I was in school. That's not the one. It's not the one I know. I like this picture. The Song of the Lark by Breton. It's with the song, The Meadow Lark. So, yeah, I'll use a lot of this stuff, and I might put these back in my printer and print on the back just so there's some color. I don't want to have to stencil or paint or whatever, ink all of these pages. So I'll put some through. Maybe I'll save some out that I can just make ephemera with. I think that's all I have for you today. Um, I'm going to clean up my craft room and probably have a chance to do some work on these before I get my supplies that I need for the chicken journals. But um, thank you for coming and checking out my next project, and I hope that you're intrigued by it. I hope that you would want to make yourself a book reader's journal. It's really fun to keep a record of the books that you've read. I used to do it. I kept a record of the books that I've read for many years, but I used to um, have a journal, like a, a store-bought journal, and I would write in the journal like you normally would, but then I would flip it over, and on the in the back I would write, these are the books that I read in this month. And then when these two writings met, I was done with that journal. But I don't have those journals anymore. So, anyway, that's all. Um, I hope that you like this project. And even if you don't want a book reader's journal, these journals are just going to be really beautiful journals full of children's book illustrations. So I hope you'll come back to see what's happening with these books. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you have a creative day today. Bye-bye.